Dell DX for the Atari VCS. And I'll be honest, it gives me a sense of deja vu playing it, because it's only about a month ago when I reviewed the Steam edition of the game on this channel. But I always knew I'd be getting the game again for the Atari VCS. The game is from Pixel Games, and one of the first games I downloaded on the VCS was Siggy, a fart for Melusina, which is from the same company. And whilst not the most epic of names for a video game, Siggy was a really fun indie platformer. Then a couple of years ago, they released Donut Dodo on the VCS, and it quickly became my favourite game on the platform. Since then, I've ended up with a weird collection of versions of Donut Dodo, not only on the Atari VCS, but also on the Evercade, Steam Deck and Switch. And I love all of them. Now, my impressions of Cash Cow DX on the Steam Deck was that it was probably going to be another game I'd play an awful lot. And whilst not exactly the same as either Siggy or Donut Dodo, it has its own charm and picked up on the best elements of those two games to be one I knew I'd end up putting a lot of time into on the VCS. In the game, you play as the titular cash cow and you run about scrolling levels that clearly have taken some inspiration from many classic arcade and platform games. The objective is to collect 100 pieces of cash and treasure that is dotted about each level, but to stop you in your goal are a few bad guys who are all themed on pigs. Now, one is green and will just run back and forth who you have to jump over, and another is Blue, who will jump at you, and this is by far the most annoying character in the game for me. Then there is a pink enemy that just hops back and forth on the spot, and then lastly, there is the main boss, the Party Pig. Now, you don't actually meet him until the final level of the game, and he doesn't actually do anything but party in the center of the stage. The game is a scrolling platformer, but it only scrolls left and right and not vertically. And there is a strong vibe of the original Mario Brothers in its level design. Along the way, each level has a theme which includes ships that rock back and forth, zip wires, trampolines and minecarts and loops, kind of like you'd find in Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, maybe my memory is bad, and I only played it on the Steam Deck about a month ago. But playing it on the VCS, I noticed a few things that don't fit my memory of playing it on the Steam Deck. Now maybe the game's been updated and maybe it hasn't, but some things felt a little bit different to me. Firstly, when you go against the party pig at the end of the game, he does seem to retaliate against you with large jets of flames that I can't remember being there when I beat the game the first time. Maybe I just got lucky and skipped past them. Also, there is a pickaxe that you can pick up, one available in each level, and you can use it to defeat bad guys. Now, on the Steam Deck version, or the PC version, the Steam version, I should say, as best as I can remember, it would only temporarily take out enemies, but I noticed this completely eliminated them from a level on the VCS. Maybe this is a change, or maybe I just didn't notice this at the time but I'm sure I commented on it in my previous review. Maybe I'm just going nuts now, and maybe I'm just better at the game and I've noticed or improved my strategy so that I'm doing better. But I do recall thinking about the limited usefulness of the pickaxe on the Steam version just kind of sucked as you could only take out enemies for a short time and you'd only have one axe per level. This made playing the game on the Atari VCS much more enjoyable as you actually feel like you do good on a level and can clean up all the bad guys. Now, it's fine if they do regenerate, as that's like when you take out the ghosts on Pac-Man when you eat a power pill. You take out and eat the ghosts, they disappear, but a few seconds later they'll come back. I accepted that, but playing it on the VCS, I definitely noticed that using the axe got rid of the bad guys permanently. Okay, so this is a little insert after I'd recorded most of the video. I had to go back to my Steam version 
and see if it was different and lo and behold i found out that the game has indeed been updated now look this is quite a new game at the time of making this video and compared to when i played it on the steam deck when it was brand new the game has received a few updates so it wasn't that my memory was playing tricks on me and it was that some of these changes that i mentioned have been put in there and i'm sure there are also a few others that i haven't mentioned on this video so far which were in the notes just little fixes little things about the trampolines feeling a bit different or not like something i read something about it being like a, a lift in mappy or something I, I couldn't actually quite remember but i do have the footage from the original version so at some later point i may do a comparison video anyway if you hear me speak about these changes a little bit later on it'll be because i already recorded it but i can now say that the mystery is solved and it's because the game has been updated so with that back on with the video I do think this game is perfect for the Atari VCS as it fits everything about the VCS and its ethos of being modern but also retro. Once you've beaten the game in easy mode, you can then tackle the game on medium and hard modes and also choose to have an alternative cash cow that has different stats for turbo mode. And then you can just do like a speed run, like a time trial -y kind of mode like they had on Donut Dodo. This is another game that follows on from that dodo that loves donuts that can be beaten in just a few minutes of playtime and is one that you'll likely return to due to its quick pick up and play nature. It has some challenge to it when you first are learning the tactics of the game, but once you get good at it, you'll be able to run through the levels quite quickly. Eventually, you'll be able to learn the timing of the game and know exactly when to pick up the pickaxe and take out all of the enemies in a level in one go. You may even get a bonus melon or other piece of fruit if you do so. If you do this and also pick up the big gems, you'll be able to maximize your score and get the most extra lives that make getting through the later stages a breeze. Although, having extra lives won't really matter when you get really good, as you'll rarely get killed. One thing that took me a while to get used to on this game is on the Minecraft level. Now, Minecraft, the minecart level, I should say. I, I'm going to leave that in. I kept finding out that carts would throw me off as soon as I tried to go on them, and I thought this meant I could only ride a cart once. Now, if a cart has reached the end of its track, the tip I can give you now is they will only let you ride back the other way if you jump on it facing the direction you wish to travel. Little tips like this will help make you a cash cow master within no time a big thing to take advantage of is the use of invincibility frames as when you first jump off the bottom of the screen and reappear at the top of the screen you'll get a few moments of invincibility where even if you bump into a bad guy it won't kill you the same when you go through any of the loops on the first stage a few seconds of invincibility can be vital to dodging enemies so that you can pick up cash quicker now now, just as I enjoyed Cash Cow DX on my Steam Deck, and I've had even more of a blast with it on my Atari VCS. Maybe it's just because I'm getting better, or maybe the things I noticed this time around are updates or improvements. I do think this is a game that is perfect that I'd want to play on my modern Atari console, and I think it's another hit in the string of games that include Siggy and Donut Dodo. Now there's at least one or two other games that this company has made which I intend to check out, and I may even do a comparison video between the different versions of Cash Cow DX and Donut Dodo in the future. So make sure you smash that subscribe button here on the Geek Battle Gaming YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the documentary reviews comparisons and other stuff that we've got going on in the channel i also put up all of the videos as articles on www.extremed.tv forward slash gaming so do check that out there and until next time stay safe always stay extreme and ciao for now boom and we're off the air <laughs>